been trying to make their mobile house into a home but there are many complications with doing so the vehicles don't steer well the rigs are too big or the rigs are too small by the time you load your vehicle into the toy hauler you may find that you don't have any room inside to live so this is one of the problems. Two years ago we decided to go full time and there's a learning curve in doing so. We owned a Toyota Prius and we found out that you couldn't really haul the Prius because of the electronic transmission. You would have to lift all four wheels off the ground for it to uh, not damage the transmissions. So that was out of the options. When we arrived at our site, it might be beautiful where we were, but we were stranded. We'd have to walk everywhere or take a bike. That's fine if your locations are close, but in our case, we didn't find it a very good experience. So another option was to haul a trailer to haul the bikes. We bought a 25 foot cargo trailer. It had a ramp in the front and a ramp in the rear and it worked really well handled fine going down the road but the problem was you couldn't park it anywhere once you arrived at the destination because no one could easily accommodate 65 feet well that may not be totally true you can go to truck stops and pull up next to the trucks and stay for the night which is fine for dry camping but if you wanted to get to a scenic place like any of the national parks or on the beach there's very few places that would accommodate 65 feet in length so we decided after a couple of rounds of hauling with the trailer that we needed a different option we decided to do a lift on the back and then haul the motorcycle you wouldn't hardly know it's there you could back up and you're barely 45 feet in length. The particular lift we bought was called a cruiser lift. You can find them on the website and it's about $3,500. Okay, go. One of the key issues with transporting a bike anytime is first of all that you have soft straps that you don't damage your secure points that you lock to. Instead of just hooking with something that might be metal, you have cloth or uh, wool or something that's very soft so that you don't ruin the polish on your bike. The second thing, and I made this mistake once. Pulling down this direction doesn't help as much with the wheel chock. You really need to pull towards the wheel chock because the whole key to keeping the bike in place is to have the wheel chock lock the front wheel and fork. So you need to have forward uh, tension uh, on it. Trying to figure out where to put these straps, we, we noticed that it's too long right here. This is the first time we put this bike on. 
because by the time you adjust down, it's still loose. So I'm going to try and bring it back over here now, see if I can find a different secure point to the mainframe. Looping it through, and you can see now I have a little more length that I can pull tight. I'm going to leave this a little bit loose because now I've got to flip the bike up. It's on the kickstand right now, as you can see. And we're going to come over now to the other side and lock it. You should have at least four attach points on this lift. I'll probably do more than that. Come through the same point with this. Again, you want to keep keep track of where all your metal parts are. Make sure they're not rubbing up against anything. If I'm not careful, this is going to hit the fender, so I need to make sure I address that. Looks like we're okay. Now we can kind of crank it up tight. And you can see now it's locked that front wheel in pretty well. But you got to keep in mind this is an 850-pound bike or more loaded that's dry weight the gross um, poundage on this lift is a thousand pounds so this bike is just about at the limit of what you can do have you tied down this end no i need to yeah. go back now and tighten this one now theoretically this lift will allow the bike to be horizontal the entire time it or, or vertical the, so the platform is horizontal the entire time so I tested it first with my smaller bike to see if see if it worked and seemed to but we'll see if this extra weight is an issue the other thing is you can see just by flexing these points, there's a lot of movement uh, that you might, you know, you might be concerned with. Uh, you want the, sh the shock to be slightly compressed. Right now, I've got about this much extra suspension from where I normally would max out on. I'm gonna try and bring it a little more level on this side. And I got less play. These are pro taper uh, straps, cinch strap straps that are uh, made for, with wheel chocks, and they have a uh, spring release lock. You slide that into here. In the directions, they say to slide it from the top, but I don't have enough clearance as long as this handle is. It won't fit all the way in, so I need to come from this way. They're worried about it coming undone and falling out, but because it's got, it's not just an S hook; it's actually a locked cinch uh, so um, it's not it shouldn't fall out now we'll try, find out if you will fall out this is the first time <laughs> so we'll find out so trying to find hard points to lock to that you're not worried about scratching is is a challenge we're going to mount this on the the rear uh, floorboard on both sides and uh, that should give us adequate uh, suspension or uh, traction bringing bring the torque up tight so it doesn't move you can see how it's still kind of loose I'm going to tighten the other side more first before I do that we'll probably do six points on this you need to have like I said at least four tighten this side up back to here. Okay, now I think uh, we'll raise it up. So I've got an up down selector on this remote that I've plugged into my 12 volt system. 
and it allows the winch to feed up and down to, uh, to give you what you need for uh, elevation. I always want to kind of keep, make sure that all your, first of all, you're wearing gloves, and secondly, that the cable's not frayed. Uh, and, uh, and that the wires, the cable is tracking in the pulley system. Now that we got it all the way up, you'll see there are these pins right here, or holes for pins. We'll slide some pins in there so that we will uh, allow the cable to rest. And then when it's going down the road, uh, we'll have it secure up at this top pivot point. Now that I've got both pins in, I can drop down the winch enough to uh, rest on the pins. So there's a little slack in the cable now, you can see in the pulley here, a little slack. And that way when you're going down the road, all the tension isn't on the cable. And now for the last thing, to secure it, you crawl underneath and we're gonna put this this uh, turnbuckle from the bottom hitch to the top of this platform and that keeps it from moving around, theoretically. tightness the platform should be pretty stable Join us next time as we hit the road with Johnny. We'll take him for a long bike ride and we'll see if that bike stays on the back of the motorcycle lift. We're going to do some unconventional camping and save some money and give you some hints as to how you too can enjoy camping life. <laughs>